Hi, welcome back to the beginning hacking series. We're going to look at TCP dump and a few other tools today. So this is the lab on packet capturing and a little bit of network forensics. First, I've got my victim up and running. It's on our security lab network and it is running an FTP server and a telnet server. The user I have on the system, I'll just go ahead and type net user here, is I've got Fatma on the system with a password of Amitav. Just her name reversed. We're going to capture some packets going back and forth to this system to see if we can maybe pull out a password or a username just over network traffic. So let's start. The first thing we're going to do is start TCP dump. So I'll type sudo TCP dump dash w for write and then we'll use telnet. I'll do this my first telnet session and I'll call it pcap. Sometimes you'll see it just called cap and other times you'll see it denoted as pcap. It doesn't really matter. You could call it anything you wanted uh, but pcap is you can pretty much tell what it is. And then I only want to gap and capture, let's see where we at. I only want to capture anything going over port 23 because this is telnet. So I'll press enter. Now this is listening on my only interface, my ETH0 interface. If you are using a different interface, be sure to specify your interface, ETH0, ETH1, or if you're using um, WLAN0, etc., you'll use a dash I to specify that. Now I'm going to open a new window. And in the new window, I'm going to telnet to the other system. I happen to know the IP address is 1.89 because we just looked at it right over here. It asks me for a login. I'll type Fatma and a password, and that is Amitav. Now I'm in the Microsoft Telnet server. I'll type a few things like DIR. In this case, I brought up the directory contents. I can also type. Uh, you know, I can change directories, I can bring up other directory contents, I can say, you know, who am I if I want to, um, anything. So IP config, or uh, yeah, IP config there, and get those details. Now that I'm done, I'll go ahead and type exit. Now I've just created a telnet connection, I opened a telnet connection, and I closed a telnet connection. We're done with our telnet packet capture. So I go back over here to TCP dump, and I'm going to press Control C. When I press Control C, it'll tell me how many packets I received by my filter. The, the utilities we're going to use in here, we're using three utilities. One's DSNF, another is NetCreds, and the last is Wireshark. DSNF, sometimes, you know, sometimes it'll work for you. Just basic options here if we just do DSNF-P, we can do dash NN, try to get it to figure it out for us. I'll type Telnet the PCAP and see if it finds anything. DSNF, it doesn't see anything in there. So let's try something else. I use netcreds. I'll tell it, okay, that's my pcap file. And sure enough, netcreds just found the username and password out of the pcap file there. Remember, I'm just sniffing the network. I captured this information going from one computer to the server. And there it is. I've got the username and the password. And that is very clear. You can definitely see what you're looking at. Now the last one we're gonna look at is Wireshark. So I'll type Wireshark telnet pcap. Wireshark will start up and if you look at Wireshark initially when you look at this thing it is you have to say what on earth is this? It's got little dots and special characters. This is one of the things with Wireshark that may turn you off to it to start with. You know it's a little busy. We click through and we can see the flags. But you don't need to do this. When you're doing this, uh, the type of forensics we're doing right now, and we just have a clear text file, all you do is click on the first Telnet packet you see, and there's a Telnet SYN packet. It's number one. And you choose Analyze, and then follow the TCP stream. Once again, click on the first Telnet packet you see, we're doing Telnet, then click Analyze, and choose Follow TCP stream. Now when we do that, you're going to see this whole thing. Welcome to the Microsoft Telnet service come up, the login, now the double double characters, F-F-A-A-T-T, -T, 
That's local echoing, so that's, a, that's an echo issue just when it was received. So it got the FFAATT. When you did the password, that was not double echoed, so you can see the password right there. We can see the X term come across, Microsoft Telnet server. We can see everything Fatma typed, DIR. We can see the results from that. We can see the who am I. We can see the IP config and all the results and exit. We can see the entire conversation that, was, that took place over Telnet using Wireshark. So if you're looking for the conversation, Wireshark is a fantastic utility. Uh, if you're just looking for the password, then a big Telnet file can take about a minute to three minutes to load in Wireshark, and that can be a little troublesome. Um, I'm just trying to really fast pop into a Telnet or some type of capture. You start Wireshark and it crashes because the capture is too big, or you start Wireshark and it takes about five minutes to load all the capture files. So it's really heavy on that sense, but you can see it's got some serious advantages when you're looking at what actually went on in the connection. If I just want the username and password, NetCreds. I don't know of anything better than NetCreds out there. Uh, it is just fantastic. It tells you what the source was, what the destination was, and bam, there's your username and password. So if you're looking for credentials, NetCreds does a great job. DSNF, your mileage may vary. Very possibly, I'm missing some options. Maybe I'm not configuring my dump or my capture correctly for DSNF, or I'm not choosing the right options for DSNF. So whatever it may be, DSNF sometimes works for me. Usually if I'm doing something on SNMP, DSNF works really well. Okay, let's finish up that section and move on over to FTP. For FTP, we're gonna do virtually the same thing as before, except port 21. So we have our Telnet 01 and we have our FTP 01. And enter. We're now sniffing port 21 on the server. Let's go over and let's log in via FTP. So I'm going to type FTP dash N because I don't want it to load my name. I want to use Fatma's name. 192.168.1.89. Enter. And it says, oh, what's, you know, here we are. I can type open maybe, Mari connected, user, what user it is, uh, Fatma, and then my password, what password, Amitav, and there we go. I'm logged into remote system type Windows NT. I can type system, just in case I didn't see that, you can see Windows NT. I can type, uh, let's see, I can type LS, get that. I can type status, uh, get some status information on what's going on. Uh, so we can get that information about FTP. And if I want to do a, a put a file on there or get a file, then I can do that on the FTP server. Or I could try to uh, I could try to change directories if there was another directory I wanted to be in. Right now, I'm just going to type quit, and bam, I'm done with FTP. Okay, we finished up our FTP. Let's go back over here to this TCP dump and cancel it. So I hit Control C. 31 packets received by the filter. Let's try our dsniff again. dsniff. Do a dash p ftp. And okay, didn't get a lot off that. And I'll try the dash m. We'll see. No. Dash n. No. Dash mn. No. Nothing on dsniff. Let's try netcreds. See if that brings up anything for me. Dash p the ftp. And bam. Once again. We have our FTP user and FTP password. It figured that out for us. Let's do Wireshark on our FTP capture and see what we got. Now, finding the username and password right here, bam, right there, request user Fatma and password Amitav. Now, of course, this is busy, and if you had a lot of traffic going on, it'd be hard to find this, but once again, we're gonna use that great feature for following the TCP stream. So up here I see my first FTP packet go across, a send request. Then there's a send ACK and an ACK. So I go back here to the send request, choose analyze, follow the TCP stream, and we've got it right there. And we can see what happened. I've got system here, what is in T, I hit system again, what is in T, um, list the files, it shows me the files, and then my quit. It's a little abbreviated from what I typed, because it was actually carrying over probably the FTP commands. And that's it for FTP. So we've got the FTP on there. 
You can actually see the username and password in the FTP right here on the screen, but it's still much easier, which we just click on one of these. We'll click on any FTP packet and go over here and choose follow the TCP stream. It'll bring up the entire stream. So even if you miss the first one, so we don't see the first one, we're down here and like wherever, we grab this, we choose analyze, follow the stream, and you're gonna see the information on there. Okay, the last step is we're going to now use Hydra and see what kind of traffic gets generated when we try to brute force a password on a system. So we're gonna go back over our TCP dump and we're gonna change this to Hydra01 hydra01.pcap. Now we want port, we want a couple of ports on this one. We want port 21 and port 23 because we're going to try to brute force uh, FTP and Telnet. So we're going to try to capture both of these. To perform the, the hydra command over here where we have our pcap and port 21 and port 23, we simply type or port 23, so port 21 or port 23. So I'll start that. Now it's monitoring both FTP and it's monitoring Telnet. Pop open the terminal here. I'm going to be using a word list for this. I don't want to make it a large word list because if I do, it will take forever and generate a massive file. So we're going to create a small word list. On our systems, we have an end user share word lists, an nmap word list. I'm going to tail that word list and uh, I'll just do it in the screen first. You can see that. I'll tail that word list and put it out to something I'm going to call password.list. So now I've created my password list. Now I'm going to use that password list as a list of the passwords for the users. I can also create a user list which We'll go ahead and do that. I'll vi username.list. We'll do Fatma uh, administrator Anud and Ahmed. There we go. Now we have a username list and a password list. So let's go ahead and start our Hydra. And first we'll attack Telnet and then we'll attack FTP. So we'll type Hydra. We can always use the dash E and SR. We're going to do a dash capital L here for the username list, and a dash capital P for the password list. Then we specify the host, 2.168.1.89, and we'll type telnet. And that's the first one we'll do. We'll run this for a little bit, and we'll see how long it takes. It sees the things that I ran earlier, so it says, am I sure I want to continue? Okay, now it went through. It said, mm, you know what? It didn't find anything. That's fine. Now let's go over and let's change this to FTP. And we'll run it again. And this time on FTP, it did find that we do have one user on the system out of our username list and one password out of the dash E in a R right there on our Hydra that was found. Now that we've done that, let's go back over and Control C to stop our TCP dump. You can see we have 4,900 packets this time. And we're going to desniff that packet. Dash P Hydra. Over here we can see that uh, desniff caught a lot of stuff this time. It can see that we, we tried to get in. There's user pass, and this kind of thing. And it tells us whether it's FTP or Telnet. Now let's go over and type netcreds, our Hydra PCAP file, netcreds-p, Hydra01 PCAP. Netcreds runs through, and it sees that, okay, we've got a username Fatma, password Karen, username administrator, password Rasmus, and it goes through all of these things. And it's still, still cycling right through, and we can see the different things that were typed in not really useful as far as the usernames and passwords because we did a brute force so we don't know which one's a username that worked and which one's a password that worked so we're just not sure now let's use Wireshark 
We start Wireshark up. Very first one here is Telnet, so I can choose to, and I can see that's Telnet over here on this side. So I'll go ahead and choose to analyze and follow the stream. Entire conversation, zero bytes. Didn't help a lot. So that didn't help, so I hit clear. Grab this one, see if that's anything. Analyze, follow the stream. Okay, we can see right here the login, unknown username or bad password, login failed. So we know that one's not it. And that's a little more information than we got with netcreds or dsniff. In this case, we can see that this did not work. We scroll on down and we should find, let's clear this, we should find FTP. So we got telnets, telnets. Well, scroll down a lot, we should find FTP. There we go. So down here we have our FTP, and you can see that we've got users and passwords going in there. So I'll just grab one of these FTPs and I'll choose Analyze, Follow the Stream. And you can see this. But those are the errors there. So when we have a lot of data, it really makes sense to go through and use something like netcreds to pull the information out of it. If we're just looking for usernames and passwords. If we've got data that contains, we want to find out what happened on the system, then we can use Wireshark and really see an entire view of what the user did. And that's a really nice thing to see. Uh, we can now pop in and look at maybe one of our emails or things of this sort if we're doing any forensics in that st standpoint. There are other applications like Explico and Net Network Miner that are just really fantastic. And of course, there are several other paid apps that are out there that are just really good, do a really good job of the forensics. We're gonna look at these free apps and we really wanna get an idea of the bottom line, what's going on behind the, behind the system here. And this is gonna give it to you. You can also use a TCP dump if you want to. And use an R for read on one of the files. I should probably cover that. And you can look through and see in the TCP dump everything that's in there. For greater, for greater, let's see, verbosity, throw a couple of V's in there and see if you find anything in there that you're looking for. You can see that TCP dump in this case, because we're analyzing a file, that's just not really all that, all that great for this. Not with the options I'm using. If we're going TCP dump for the Hydra, You'll see that scrolls through really fast. But what are we looking for? We're going to have to get more specific.